Hi, Chem Gang. In this question, we're looking at um, this uh, reaction of sodium sulfide plus copper sulfate uh, reacts to give us sodium sulfate and copper sulfide. And the question is, how many grams of excess reactant remain, uh, assuming that the reaction goes to completion in the following equation? Uh, and we're given the amounts of sodium sulfide in grams and the amounts of copper sulfate in grams to start off with. So when we're going to uh, try and solve a question like this, when we're talking about an excess reactant, well, we have to know whether our reactants, which one is limiting reactant and which one is an excess reactant. So we don't know that to start off with. So that's the first thing we have to find out is which one of these is going to be the excess and which one is going to be the limiting. Once we know that, then we can use that information to solve um, how much reactant we'll have remaining for that excess reactant. Now, we're starting with grams, and normally we need to actually have moles. So we need to convert each of these to moles. And that's our first step before we can even decide which is the limiting reactant and which is the access reactant. So to figure out um, the number of moles we have, we have to first figure out what our molar mass for each of these are. So molar mass of Na2S is equal to, there's two sodiums, and the molar mass of sodium is 22.99 grams. So two times that plus the molar mass of sulfide, which is 32.06. So I'm going to go ahead and do that calculation. Two times 22.99 is 45.98 plus 32.06 gives us a grand total of 78.04 grams per mole, which is our molar mass. And then I'm going to find out the molar mass of the other reactant, which is the copper sulfate. So copper has a molar mass of 63.55 grams, plus sulfide, which is that 32.06, plus oxygen, and there are four oxygens uh, at 16.00 grams each. So when I do that calculation, my grand total is 159.61 grams per mole. So that's the molar mass of copper sulfate is 159.61 grams. Now I can use these molar masses to convert 15.5 grams of Na2S into moles. So I'm going to keep on going over here. I think that makes more most sense. If I have 15.5 grams of NaS or Na2S uh, and I want to figure out um, what's the molar mass for that. So moles of Na2S. I'm going to use the conversion factor that one mole of Na2S is equal to my molar mass, which is 78.04 grams of Na2S. My grams will cancel out, uh, leaving me with my moles. So 15.5 times 1 is 15.5, divided by 78.04 grams gives me 0. 1986 moles of Na2S. So my moles of this are going to be 0 0.1986 moles of Na2S. Next, I'm doing my, if I have 12.1 grams, So 12.1 grams of copper sulfate, and I want to know how many moles that's equal to. Then I am going to multiply that by one mole of copper sulfate 
is equal to the molar mass of copper sulfate, which is 15, 159, sorry, 0.61 grams of copper sulfate. My grams of copper sulfate cancel out. And then I go 12.1 times 1 divided by 159.61 is going to give me 0 0.0758 moles of copper sulfate. So I'm going to put that up here. So all I've done so far is just converted my starting amounts for each of the reactants into their molar amounts. That's all I've done. I haven't figured out or haven't identified what is the limiting reactant. Uh, that's my next step, but I needed to know my molar amounts of these before I could do that. So my next step is to identify the limiting reaction, reactant. Sorry. So for my limiting reactant, I'm going to start off with the molar amounts of each reactant. I'm going to first start off with sodium 2 sulfide, and I'm going to get, uh, so that's 0 0.1986 moles of Na2S. And I'm going to see how much product that makes. Now, I can decide which product that I want to use to figure out my limiting reaction, reactant. It doesn't matter which one I use. For this, I'm just going to go with the first one, Na2SO4. Uh, you could do it for each of these, but, um, but it's just over calculations. If you figure out which is the limiting reaction for Na2SO4 with each of these, you'll be fine. That's the same answer as if you were figuring out how much each of these reactants produce for uh, the copper sulfide. So I'm going to do um, moles. So I'm going to do moles of Na2SO4 of the product. That's what I'm looking for. And my stoichiometric relationship I'm going to use is the following. So looking at the coefficient in front of Na2S, there is none. So that means it's a one mole. And same here, there isn't one. So that means one mole. There actually isn't a coefficient in front of any of these. So it's all just a one to one ratio. So one mole of Na2S gives us one mole of Na2SO4. Which means that if I have 0 0.1986 moles of Na2S, that means I'm also going to have 0 0.1986 moles of my Na2SO4 created. So there I figured out my first um, amount of product made by that first reactant. Now I need to find out my second. Um, how much my second reactant makes of that same product. So I start out with 12.1 grams of copper sulfate. That's equivalent to 0 0.0758 moles of copper sulfate. So I'm going to put that down, 0 0.0758 moles of copper sulfate. I'm finding out the same uh, product. So I'm going to stick to Na2SO4, and that relationship of copper sulfate to sodium sulfate, again, is 1 to 1 based on this coefficient here and that coefficient there. It's a 1, one mole to 1 mole. So when I do my calculations, I'm going to get 0 0.0758 moles of Na2SO4. So looking at which reactant has um, the least amount of product made, it's this copper sulfate. It creates the least amount of product, therefore it's the limiting reactant. How much product is made is dependent on how much copper sulfate we have. That leaves us with sodium sulfide. That's going to be our excess 
reactant. So through this second step here, we have identified the access reactant as being N, whoops, <laughs> N, I better erase that. Here we go, as being our Na2S because it creates the most product. So that's going to be our access reactant because you're going to have some left over because we can only make 0.0758 moles based on this copper sulfate. So for this next step, I just need to clear up some room because I'm, I'm running out of room. So I'm just going to take out this piece. I'm going to bring this part up because I'm still going to need that information. So I'm just going to pull that up here. There we go. And that's that. Okay. So we now know that the, uh, that copper, actually I want to, just because I know I'm going to need a lot of room here, I'm going to put this new information here. So now we know that copper SO4, that's going to be our limiting reactant. And we know that sodium sulfide is our access reactant. The next step is how much, because we need to know how many grams of access reactant remain um, if this reaction goes to completion. So we know that our copper sulfate is a limiting reactant. So if we have zero 0.0758 moles of copper sulfate, this is how much sodium sulfate that we're going to create. So this is the product that we create. And we can work backwards if we know that we create this much of sodium sulfate, we can work backwards to figure out how much of the Na2S was used to create this. So that's the next step. So just to delineate, next step, I'm just going to do that. So if I have 0 0.0758 mole of Na2SO4 that's created with this limiting reactant, I need to know how much of our Na2S went into making that. So to do that, I'm going to use my stoichiometric relationships again. But this time I'm going to put mole of Na2SO4. Remember, whatever you put on the bottom is going to cancel out your units. And on the top, I'm going to put moles of Na2S. And then based on my equation here, it's a one to one ratio. So that means that if I have 0.0758 of this product made, it's going to take the same amount whoops, of access reactant, 0.758 moles of Na2S to create it because 0.0758 times 1 divided by 1 is that. So that means that this is how much of my sodium sulfide was used in the reaction. Now what I want to do is convert this to grams of Na2S. In order to figure out how many grams of access reactant remain, I first need to figure out how many grams of access reactants was used to make the product. So I'm going to go down here, 0 0.0758 moles of uh, Na2S. I'm going to convert that to grams. So I'm converting that to grams of Na2S. So I need to do my molar mass. So if I have one mole, of Na2S. I'm going to use my molar mass, which I have erased. So I'm just going to go back in my notes, my molar mass for 
uh, Na2S was 78.04 grams of Na2S. So this is going to uh, help me figure out how many grams um, were used to make this. So 0 0.0758 times 78.04 divided by 1 gives me 5.915 grams of Na2S used to create the product. And the last step here is if 5.915 grams were used and we started out with 15.5 grams, then how much are remaining? So we're going to take that 15.5 grams minus the 5.915 grams and we get 9.58 grams of Na2S remaining. And that is the answer to the question, which was how many grams of access reactant, which we figured out was the Na2S, remain when this um, reaction completes. So I hope that helps with um, these types of questions. It is a very complex question to answer uh, and made more complex because they gave out our starting uh, amounts as grams instead of moles. So we had to do that conversion first. So feel free to um, rewatch and pause so that you um, can get each step. And if you have any questions, let me know. Bye for now.